Brian and I <laughs> teach after school classes with our buddy Tyson for Mission Bit. And so we thought, at the Agadon, let's create an educational product. Nevertheless, fate has been cruel to Ham Weenie. Do you think the little girl is cruel to Ham Weenie? Yes, I think she's cruel. You do? I don't. I think she loves him very much. She's taking care of him. Do you see the mice in the picture? How many mice can you find? I see three mice. Did you see the two mice in the purple pail? Yep, there they are. Do you see the duck in the hat? What color is the duck's hat? I think it's hat's blue. That's right. It says the duck is named Grandpa. What a silly name for a duck. Do you see the pail the mice are playing in? What color is the pail? That's a purple pail. That's right. It's a purple pail. Purple pail is fun to say. I like words that make the P sound. Playing in a pretty purple pail. Nowadays, when you think about interactive toys, you think video games, which is great for motor control, but not much else. And when I was a kid, it was about story time with grandma, where she would read with me, not just to me. So this toy is just as much about teaching parents how to read with their kids and ask them questions about the material as it is about teaching kids. Brian and I have competed and won many hackathons and we're used to just throwing a prototype together, throwing it up on the wall and seeing if it sticks, testing other developers who want to come by and check it out, and then going through the judging process to see if it's something that people would like. You really got to be able to just hack it together quickly, get it out there and see how people respond to it. Do it quick, do it dirty, get it done. Yeah, it's not about being perfect because you're on a deadline. So the code we put together is really a hack over the weekend. If I showed you my code, I'm going to lose all my developer time. <laughs> so it's not just the code that was a hack, actually. Well, the bear, I mean the dog, is also <laughs> a hack. It's We call it an animatronic bear because it is, but it's not that fancy. We have safety pins sticking out here. One of them just poked me, <laughs> and that hurt. And we also have the Lego Mindstorm in it so we have the controller sticking out here and we just pinned it together and um, bought this at Toys R Us. He lost a little stuffing on the way but he told me now. Yeah so we just threw it together with Legos and the bear so it's nothing too fancy. So the Google Chrome has a really powerful API with voice recognition. We were able to put the hack together in about 200 lines of code really easy to do over the weekend. We actually get to spend a lot of time engaging with the other hackers that were there. And they would come up, play with the bear, have some fun with it. We like to always see, you know, how people actually interacted with what we were building. We thought about doing a voice synthesis, but then it sounded really creepy for children. So I decided to do the voice acting. And we're reading the amazing Hamweenie. Nevertheless, Faith has been cruel to Hamweenie. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, kind of makes my knees cry <laughs> a little bit. This is a Lego Mindstorm, and we just put it together with this actuator to move the head and this actuator to move the arm. And as you can see, it fits right into this toy that I bought. Um, and just by cutting open the back, and removing some of the stuffing. We're able to shove it in there, and then with the actuators, we're able to make it move like this. <laughs>